kind of mixed four, four, four stream model is, you know, we hope, uh, the potential growth of the public institution it will be both, both more complex in its financial model, but more, reflect, more flexible and more responsive to social, political, economic, and scientific change. So there are inevitably identity crises uh, involved in, or, uh, 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 or I'll put it this way, a challenge to redefine our, our, our sense of ourselves as a public definition, uh, a public mission, uh, a public institution. Now, I want to again stand back a little bit and say in American life, the notion of the public has never been simply reducible to its government. And we don't, again, articulate this as robustly as I think we could. The New York Public Library is a public library without having any public funding. That's a lofty public library. And even UC Berkeley, in its very beginnings, uh, began with private endowments, uh, a major patronage uh, from private philanthropy. So I think that if we can sort of tease out the uh, uh, more layered and more uh, richer notion of, uh, of, of our notion of publicness, it might help us find a way forward. It's not simply a question of who pays, but rather who pays what, and I'll come back to that, and who, who benefits. Uh, first and foremost, public universities have to remain committed to universal access to the very best higher education for all qualified students, regardless of their social and economic background. And we have to guarantee public access to the knowledge produced by research universities. And we must be uh, maintain, I think it's in the mission statement of the University of California, a commitment to research that is uh, devoted to the betterment of society as a whole. These are the kinds of themes that uh, Bob Bertal began with, and I think they're worth reviving, repeating, and, and echoing as far and wide as we possibly can. Well, so how are we to ensure that uh, this in a climate where students are increasingly construed as consumers, and, and administrators are increasingly accountable to trustees as well as state agents, the state regents. Now, accessibility through higher tuition is a uh, <coughs> and greater financial aid, the high tuition, high financial aid model. The real challenge at Berkeley is not with the poorest of our students. We admitted the largest uh, class of Pell Grant eligible students to Berkeley uh, this year. A third, approximately a third of the students at Berkeley come from. Pell Grant eligible families, that is to say families whose <coughs> incomes are less than $45,000 a year. We're very proud of that fact. And a quarter of them, like uh, at Rutgers, are, we have a third, we have a quarter who have never attended, these families come from families who have never, have, uh, no one who's ever attended college. So I think that the real problem for us is not the poor students, it's the middle class. And we're going to see an increasing crisis of those who fall between the full paying student and the kid who gets a federal uh, uh, a federal uh, financial aid package or a state financial aid package. Another critical dimension of the issue of public identity is who employs uh, the faculty. And this is where that 20% of our remaining state budget, I think, is really an important thing because that 20% of our remaining state budget is, in fact, the salaries of our faculty and our staff. And this creates a very different culture, and I've been thinking about this quite a bit. Professors at Berkeley, even though to an increasingly greater extent that their incomes are being supplemented by private other sources of funding, are still principally paid by the state, and they perceive themselves to be civil servant, uh, civil service employees of the state of California. If that changes, I think we really are in a moment of structural definitional crisis. And I think that that's not, it's not surprising that what we're seeing in California right now is uh, uh, an increasing politicization of the, of the pension issue for precisely this reason. But the autonomy and the sense of a, civil, of a civil service faculty and staff, I think, is crucially linked to that 20% of the budget uh, that we're desperately trying to hold on to. Um, and this goes to the heart, I think, of Berkeley's culture of self-governance. It's run not just for the people, but also by the people in a very uh, profound sense. Resource allocation, whether it comes from the private sector or the public sector, is socialized through uh, local institutions of shared governance that have distinguished Berkeley since the 1920s. And I think these two things are very intimately linked, and it's that precious definitional culture uh, that I think sustains a notion of the publicness of the institution. You know, my husband, for example, said this morning, you know, it's history month, and uh, every high school kid in California is sending me emails asking me you know, questions about their research, but I've said probably if I was at Harvard, I wouldn't answer those emails. But I feel it's my duty as a servant <laughs> to, to, to answer those emails, and I, I think that, that speaks to the, the sort of identity part of this. 
Uh, finally, I want to end on a Tocquevillian note, um, because there's also, a pro not only because I still am sometimes a French historian, uh, <laughs> there's also a profound sense in which the notion of a public university, and especially Berkeley, is a civic institution, is sustained as much by its engagement with civil society and American associational life as with the state. There are ways, and I, I say this just as a personal note, the ways in which Berkeley, the Berkeley I encountered when I first returned there 20 years ago, was less engaged with the public and the citizens of the state and the nation than it is today. I think an over-reliance on state funding can create walls too thick, an ivory tower too high, and, alter and alternatively, it can also create over-vulnerability of the university to the whims of political moments. Private endowment and that is, in a profound sense, another form of public engagement, uh, elite public engagement, but in a populist moment like ours, it's not something, if we look over uh, the Atlantic to uh, the UK, not something that we should, uh, we should um, uh, turn our noses uh, uh, away from. I think it, it will be a profound component of sustaining our autonomy uh, in relation to uh, this uh, angry populist moment. So the answer for Berkeley this lies in a, in, in a delicate balance of mixed forms of engagement with the richness, I think, of the American notion of public life and learning. Access, engagement, accountability, and autonomy. And lastly, I want to make a historian's comment about this identity crisis. I think if we're in a definitional moment at Berkeley, it's not only because of the fiscal crisis and its institutional consequences. There's also a very deep sense, uh, to my mind, of generational change at Berkeley.